Hi, my name is Megan, and this is a Naughty Mess Knitting Podcast. Hey, everybody, welcome to episode 25, I think. Ooh, 25. Um, I guess that means next week is six months. No, that's half a year. Um, I actually didn't really mark <laughs> the calendar super well. I just know it was after flock. So, um, that approximately makes sense for timing. So, well, that's exciting. I am excited to be here in episode 25. We are going to be doing a normal podcast episode this week. Um, I won't be talking about all of the whips because a couple of them did not get any attention this week. I do have a new cast on. I have a new finished object. Anything else? No acquisitions, but I have a fun weekend to talk about and um, a couple extra things just to chat about. So uh, let's start with what I'm wearing. Today I am wearing the Ashling sweater which is a pattern I tested in the fall for Maddie Mo of, um, her Instagram handle is momer01. Um, she has several patterns out. This was released on the same day that the Cumulo Nimbus, which is a V-neck fuzzy plus fingering weight, um, sweater came out. This one is, uh, and I think they came out in January. Whenever I posted this on Instagram, that was the day it came out. So, um, I finished this way back in November, like the first week of November, but this is a single strand of Surrey. I like wear this, not a lot, a lot, but like pretty frequently. And I want another one. I think like it was kind of crazy to knit, but I love all the details for it. Um, and I, I want another one. Like it's kind of like the perfect weight. So it's warm, but it, because it's a fuzzy sweater, but it is also like very lightweight because it's only one strand of Surrey. Um, so that's what I have to say about it. I made the size five, which is a 48 inch bust. That gives me about one inch of positive ease. I think the recommended ease is more than that, but I didn't want it. And I love the way that it fits, it has some very fun finishing details. Um, one thing I will note is like, this is the first time you guys have seen me wear it with a little bit of elastic. I did. That's the one thing I would change. I mean, I didn't go back to the last iteration of the pattern. Cause I was like right in the middle wave. And there were a couple of people that had mentioned not issues with the neck, but like, uh, that it was either like a little bit like sat like this, like away from you, but yeah. Um, and so I think that if I did this again, if there aren't really any significant changes to the pickup, I would just take out one full repeat. So this, it's a two by two rib. And I think that this would sit perfectly then. It was just like a, the tiniest bit to make it like too tall or too, too, loose or open. Um, but I love the other details. So this has a ribbing that goes like down your sleeve, down the body. It is knit bottom up. It's got, um, a high low hem and it has this is a split hem, but oop, I'm on tippy tippy toes. Uh, but you can see that this, there's like this overlap and it's so cute. So it's just like so flattering on and like, I don't know. I just love it. It's so cute. Um, this is made out of, uh, Surrey. That's a custom color. I had Aaron from Backloop Yarn Co. make me. It's periwinkle adjacent. And so that's what we're going to call it. Um, I have more skeins of this and I just like, I'm obsessed. I don't know what I'm going to make with them, but I'm, I'm going to make something because I really love it. Um, okay. So that's what I'm wearing. It is an absolutely gorgeous sweater. Would do again. I like that's high praise. And the fact that I've been thinking about it, like, even though I just made this not that long ago, like I would go into fall next fall with another one and be very happy about it. Um, okay. Like I don't have a million and a half sweaters on my planning, <laughs> all the planning things. Okay. So let's talk about what I finished this week. I did finish one exciting project. This is my, was my oldest whip kind of. I do have one languishing whip. We're not going to talk about that right now because I decided I'm not going to cast it on or like pick up till I am done at Mike's sweater. That's the order of things right now. Um, and then I also have to wait for one of my needles to open probably. Anywho, um, I am done 
My Cinnabar. I don't even know. I can't get far enough away. This is a fun shape. Okay, so this is, you guys, it's so pretty. And that's not even the exciting side. That's the, this is the exciting side. <laughs> Isn't that so fun? Okay, so let's talk about this. This is the Cinnabar Shaw by Andrew Mowry. Um, it is a one size A-line Shaw that has like just non um half or part garter, part two color brioche, and it is just knit with like different a varying amount of increases, right? Like this has a third of the amount or half of the amount, half of the amount of increases is this side. Anyway, so you increase quite a lot every four rows. It's like, a, it's a, it's a four row repeat that gets inversed. So that's why you get these kind of like light things. It's just, if you get up close and personal, you can see that it's just the inverse there. Um, and it's so pretty. I love it. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, I knit this using um, Absolute Zero from <laughs> Brain Fart. By the way, it is Sunday night and we just got home from a weekend away and I, yeah, I'm tired. So um, anyway, uh, yeah, so Absolute Zero, which is a color uh, from Spin Cycle on Dyed in the Wool and that's, that's the color changing color. Um, and then the gray is called Driftwood Gray and it is an undyed wool from um, Pearl Soho, the good wool. Um, that's like a sport weight. It's 383 yards for 100 grams, 100% Andean Highland wool and um spin cycle is 200 yards for however much you get a little bit around 50 grams um and it is 100% American wool um this is very sheep like when I got this wet it smelled like sheep like I washed this and I was like holy sheep um I'm really glad I used wool wash because it smells fine now but in the sink it was so sheepy it is also both of these are non-super wash wools so I um if you caught my story when I took gave this a little bath um I posted a story on Instagram and it was very water resistant I mean wool naturally is so I'm like pushing it down it was like just did not want to get wet <laughs> um it dried pretty quickly um once I did get all the water out um, I took this with me on the weekend away and I did wear it a couple of times. Like I wore it out to dinner on Friday. Um, and I will, I'll wear it for some of this episode. So I'm not really sure. Like I can wear it really shawl like it is a good ish size. Um, it's not because it doesn't like sit down your middle. I don't have like tons and tons that would sit just over my shoulders, like way more on this side because of the way that it's shaped. And then this side is like kind of itty bitty, which is like, a little bit strange maybe for to wear it like a shawl so I think I would tend to wear it probably more um in this sort of off-centered bandana e style which is how I will wear it right now for you um it blocks super nice I'll put a picture up real fast of it unblocked and then blocked and then you can see the difference because definitely blocking is magic um and it didn't, it just was like very puckery before it was unblocked or before it was blocked. So there, I think I kind of wear it like this. Let me stand and I'll show you. Just like wear it off to the side a little bit. And like, then you get a lot of this brioche, but you also get this fun part here. I love how the color looks on both sides. It's just so pretty. Okay, I like it. Okay, so that is my finished object for this week. Um, I don't have a finished spin. And I'm like still in the middle again. We were gone this weekend, so I didn't spin it all for, for the weekend. So I um, have one bobbin done and it looks the same really as last week, except for there's a little more yarn on it. Um, okay, so let's talk through what I have to talk through. I'm not going to talk about my Calm Down cardigan because I don't think I picked it up at all this week. Um, I'll tell you the other fun thing we were doing this weekend. Sorry, let me fix my tank top. Okay, um, the other thing I don't think I'm going to talk through is my... Um, my Pike Place knit, which is my ballerina wrap top, because I really think I added like three rows. Yeah, I had like three rows to the body during knit night, and then I didn't pick it up the rest of this week, and 
Um, I did bring it with me this weekend, but I was working on some other things. So uh, let's talk through uh, the three projects that I have uh, progress on. So first project is projects over here um so the first project here is going to be my stick season which is a knit for my husband mike um i have made quite a lot of progress i think this is where i was last week i had the front done um or i had the front here to here <laughs> created like the neck neckline de um increase is done and then I joined the body got that all finished and I started uh knitting in the round um and we had a pretty long car ride on Friday um to our weekend and then also just like I knit on it a little bit last night and um, I drove back he let me play passenger princess on Friday but I drove back um today so I did not get to knit like at all I don't I like knit like five rows of something else today and that was it um but it's looking pretty good I did go up a needle size so like look at what's happening here so my sticks are pretty prevalent I sort of was like oh I don't like how much they're sticking out but I think that they'll block you know a little bit give me a little length actually and like it just it is what it is like it's a different texture it's not going to be exactly the same I went up um, yeah, so I went up one needle size because the body, the sticks I knit in a 3.5. And then I think like the cuffs and collar are supposed to be 3.25. Um, I think 3.75 was a good call. I mean, I think I did like the first round in 3.5 and I was like, oh, that is very tiny. Um, yes. So let's, I'm gonna, I might do like another inch or two, then steam block it um try it on Mike and make sure it really like is fitting under his armpits I did add like four rows before to the back also and four to the pattern as it was written to the front just so that like to give his like underarm a little bit more space which is one of the suggestions in the pattern um and so this is a size four and it is a 44 and a half inch um chest circumference uh, the recommended ease is two to six inches he's a guy though so I think it's kind of like whatever is comfortable that he wants to wear um this will be like four or five inches for him but um I think I will taper the waist a little bit uh we'll sort of see this is naturally getting a little bit smaller like right under his armpit so that's like not bad um and I am using a woolly knit merino cone, cone and the color pinot green which is one held double 257 yards for 100 grams and I love this oh sorry I don't think I said at the very beginning even though I'm probably already put the thing up this is the stick season sweater by Rebecca Clo, who is the Crayabea um I am I'm really enjoying the pattern I like the details like I really one of the things I really love about this pattern and something I would knit myself not with the sticks because I don't like that texture I just like don't really like the placement of the texture but I love this detail so it's like across the shoulder you get this like cute little rib and then it goes all the way down the side it is also on the front side and then it joins for like a double amount of the rib underneath and I like I kind of love any sort of fun raglan or shoulder details like I think that's you know it's a very cute elevation and it's like something fun that you could like use variegated yarns and still get like some kind of interesting small interesting piece okay so that is one of the things I worked on it's probably the thing I worked on the most I did not still tell him I would get this done by his birthday but his birthday is in a week and a half and I would like to get it like mostly done it would be pretty nice if I got it done close to his birthday unlike the two years I promised him a sweater last time that's how long it took me to <laughs> to finish it um we'll get this one done pretty quickly okay so I will now talk about my sweet shop cardigan chunky um which is a pattern by Iris H of Hyris Makes I am an affiliate for her just a reminder if you would like to get 10% off please check out the link below um I'm really enjoying this so this is my first pattern I've made by her um I she does have like a little bit of a 
um, a European style. So I think I would say this also about Rebecca's patterns from the Crayabea is that some like where there needs to be detail, there's detail, but there is not like a hand holding through the pattern. Like this is why we're doing this. Like it just goes from instruction to instruction. I do not think that's a bad thing. I think as soon as you get over like the intermediate beginner that like you don't necessarily need, even if it's a new construction type, you kind of just like understand the flow of patterns a little bit better. You don't maybe need as much hand holding as some other American designers do. And this, I mean, this is a, not a lot of stitches, pretty straightforward, uh, raglan cardigan that has an all over broken rib texture. It is very squishy, obviously. Um, and it has been like easy to understand, easy to go with. There's like, I'm on the, I'll show you where I got to, but I like have done a ton of this because it obviously goes really quickly, quickly since it's super bulky yarn. So this is made with, um, the wool from We Are Knitters in the color Yarnicorn. It is a hundred percent wool, 87 yards for a hundred, for 200 grams. My goodness. It is very bulky. Um, and it is going to be like something I probably keep at my desk, just throw on over anything else if I'm chilled. Um, I, where was I? I don't even think I have a progress keeper on here because I don't, I don't know. I just didn't put one on. I think last week I had maybe like split for sleeves. I maybe hadn't even gotten that far. Um, I did obviously then, um, split for sleeves and finish the body. And I picked up a, a sleeve and I, um, am actually, actually not, I'm not super far from, uh, there's like a decrease row and then ribbing. Um, I did like an extra two rows or row of ribbing down here. I just like, I don't know, I was in a groove. Um, I did do a sewn bind off, which was really a pain in the butt with, um, the super bulky, you know, semi plied, not really plied yarn. Um, it was, I mean, this is going to pill like crazy. Like this is not a hard wearing anything. Um, but yeah, it looks great. Great so far. I just saw something in this. I think it's only on this sleeve. I may drop back and fix it. I just saw like two stitches that I clearly did in the wrong pattern, just like part of one row that is not broken rib now. And they are right in the sleeve and I can totally just drop this whole section back and redo it. And I probably will, cause I don't see it on this side. Oh Lord. But it's only like 12 stitches back. So like I have dropped f much further than that. I'm glad I'm seeing it now. And it's on the sleeve I didn't pick up yet. Um, anywho, these this I am making with 15 millimeter needles. Like look at these guys. I'm not kidding. They are huge. This is like my whole hand. Um, and then the ribbing is done with 12 millimeters and it's been flying by. I did not take this with me on the weekend because it was, <laughs> look at it, it's enormous. Um, I was not gonna like walk around where I was with that. So I did not bring it with me. I will likely, like I have this ball to finish at least one other ball. And then I might need just like a little bit of the last one. And um that yeah and that's all and I have no idea if I'm like on gauge I think I'm probably a little bit tighter than gauge um which is to be expected I think like I have not been using really big needles for a while and like yeah um but I also am like not gonna I'm not gonna wet block this I might steam block it but like it would take seven years to dry if I wet blocked it um I will probably steam block it and I will probably like stretch it a little bit to see if I can get it like just a little bit looser. Um, I did try it on though and it fits fine. It's supposed to have 60 inches um, in circumference at, at like the just 60 inches in circumference, right? It's like just a boxy fit. Uh, but I'm thinking right now it's probably like 53 or 54 Again, that's enough ease on me, so it's totally fine, but I might just steam it a little, stretch it just a tiny bit, just to open the broken rib too, because I think like right now, 
it looks okay, but I think if I had a little bit more space, it would look great. So that is something I worked on a bunch. Okay. Here is another thing I worked on. A new cast on. So again, I'm trying to keep five projects on the needle. So we have the Calm Down Cardi, the Ballerina Wrap Top, which I did not talk about. The Stick Season Sweater, the Chunky um, sweet, shop, sweet Shop Chunky Cardigan. And then I finished this. So I cast on something and I wanted to take a pro travel project, which is one of the reasons I just busted this out. Also, because I realized I was so close to finishing this and it had to be done. And then it was. Um, and actually, I will say, I didn't really talk about this that I didn't talk about this because like this is the last part you didn't see was like finishing this repeat maybe I had just finished it and then I did like f this repeat here and then um I for some reason thought this was like gonna be a ribbed thing and like 15 rows of ribbing it's like 400 stitches and I was like that's gonna be hard but it's just knit it's garter so it's just knit 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 and that was actually super great. And I did um, her recommended bind off, which is the Jenny's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off. And I don't love that bind off. Be I really I should have done it with a crochet hook. You can do that one, th that one with a crochet hook. And it would have gone a lot faster. But like I started it and I didn't have one near me. And then I just didn't want to like have a weird tension change. And so I just did it and it was a lot of stitches to do. And I just don't think it's as rhythmic as it should be. <laughs> Okay, um, but what did I cast on, you ask? Uh, well, great question. I cast on a brownstone beanie, which is a pattern by Tori Yu of Tori Knits NYC. And I did that in a color you guys have probably been seeing a lot of if you're on Instagram. This beautiful, beautiful pink called In My Neon Era by Explore Knits and Fibers. I got this single skein of this, just one skein, from um, the summer market last July. Um, I know I've said this many times, Sylvan is a yarn angel, and she um, took my many skeins that I requested and got all of them. Um, and we, as a Pacific Knit West knit group, my little knit group here, um, decided we would like all go into on in my neon era for beanies I don't know if anyone has cast theirs on yet but I just needed a travel project the monochrome has been making me want to use this color so much like the the launch and everyone talking about this color so I cast it on and I am happy super happy with how it's coming um this is an interesting construction I I think it's a little bit like like the Oslo hat like there's got to there's another one I don't know. Um, but similar to that is that like you're knitting, although this has a change. I don't know if the Oslo hat has this. Um, this has a, a bunch of elements to it. So you knit a, like a kind of a long tube and then you fold it in half and you knit it together and then you do the like inside out. So it's like got a, got a good ridge for like the flip. Um, and then you're knitting double the brim part. Um, so there's a lot going on in this relatively simple looking pattern, but it's a very similar shape to the Manhattan hat. I'm sure I've already put the picture up, but um, but it's all stuck in it. And so um, I will use like the entire skein of this if I don't run it out. And I really hope that I don't. I decided to do the adult medium, which I would normally do an adult large because I have a big head. But um I am okay with it, this one, like, it'll, it has enough stretch. Like, I tried it on, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is fine. Um, it's supposed to have some negative ease, and so, yeah. So, I'm really excited to have this, like, as a hat. Like, what a fun color. It's gonna make me so happy, and then I'm gonna be, like, a little fluorescent baby outside, so. Um, I am tracking right along. Also, like, I think most of the people in my knit group have this yarn, so, like, hopefully, if I needed, like, five grams, like, which is as much as I would need to finish. Um, I could snag that from somebody. Um, but I, and I didn't get any during the launch, even though I could have got like a 50 gram skein, but I really don't think I'll need it. I think I'm going to be like good. Um, and if anything need like the tiniest bit. So what else? 
that's all the knitting things. And then I'm still spinning that lavender latte fiber. Um, oh, I am making this, sorry, like all the details. I am making that brownstone beanie with, it is Explore Knits and Fibers in my neon era. Okay, so it is um, in the Denali sock base, which is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 400 yards for 100 grams. Um, and uh, I am using 3.25 millimeter needles, and then I think it'll be a 3.75 millimeter needle when you um, hold it double. You at least go up to a 3.5, not a 3.75. I um, am still on the, the hold it single part. Like the first part of the instructions is like cast on however many stitches and knit like a lot <laughs> and stock in it. And I was like, okay. Um, so that was my car project for the most point, at part. I also did work on Mike's thing. And then like we went out to dinner, which I'll talk about the weekend in a second. Um, and like I took that and I knit on both of, at both of the dinners I had. So, um, okay. So let's talk about books really fast. Books I am done. I think I did not finish last week. Let me just check. Okay. So last week I, um, in, in this past week, I finished the fourth wheel of time book, which is called shadow rising. I did immediately start the sec the second, the fifth book, um, which is called the fires of heaven. So this is a series by Robert Jordan. It is a high fantasy book series that is like 14 books long. They're all like a thousand plus pages. I'm pretty sure. I mean, they're like, I think this, I don't know how long the fires of heaven is, but I know shadow rising was like 40 hours on, on audible. It's hefty. They, um, have a lot going on though, like very good versus evil and like the cyclical nature of history and power struggles and things like that. Um, and of course, like, teenagers who know nothing well I think they're like all early 20s being thrust into good versus evil battle <laughs> and being wholly wholly unprepared for it and uh you know um it is they're very entertaining um they're a little bit slower moving than some of the romanticy stuff especially that I read but um I have been enjoying them and do you guys like my new water bottle it's it's got my name on it and it's so purple <laughs> I'm like very purple today but this was a gift from this weekend okay um I am still also reading Dirty 30 which is number 30 in the Stephanie Plum series by Jan Ivanovich I will finish it eventually um I'm Kindle reading that and you guys I got I thought I was gonna be able to like read a bunch this weekend but I read like four pages and that was it so <laughs> um okay what did I do this weekend so, well, let's go back to what I did this week. I will put a picture up here of a new thing. I think I talked to you guys, maybe I said this on the podcast, I can't really remember, but um, I, one of my goals for this year it was to figure out how I really wanted to store my knits. And when my husband and I moved into this house, it's beautiful, it's all, it's all the things, um, but I didn't really love how the closets were organized. We have like the, the wire closet made things and like they're just our bedroom in particular had like a lot of hanging space which is nice but the the shelving for like where I could put sweaters was like kind of awkward and um it also made that like walk-in closet that it was pretty narrow feel very very small so we're gonna redo some of that space but we got this beautiful thing from Ikea which I will put here um and it is just like a closet one of their closet organizations that you can wall mount um and it is a ton of shelves so it is empty in this picture and I don't have a picture of it full because we got this on like Monday um but then I don't know we like put a couple of the drawers together but then it was knit night on Tuesday and then Wednesday we did a bunch of it. And I think we ended up finishing putting it up on Thursday, which, cause like we had to like, you know, drill holes and do things like this. Um, and also build the whole thing, which like, I like to build Ikea things actually. That's a weird, you know, menial task I love to do, but, um, it was a lot, just so, so many, so many, um, 16 drawers, you guys, that's like, it's, it's hefty. It's, it's quite a lot of space. It's like 10 and a half feet big. Um, and it is a ton of shelves. So like now I do have a couple of my sweaters, like we're sat on there and, um, 
I have so much room for more sweaters. Right now, like this number of shelves we got, we were sort of feeling it out. I might get a couple of couple more to supplement some of that, but it does help with like bulky sweaters. I can stack a couple without having to like smush them into a sort of a narrow space. Um, but I might get a couple more than that. I'm not sure. So, uh, that's an exciting thing that we did. And that took up a lot of my week. So I also did not knit as much as I wanted to this week, but I was like, Oh, I'm going to have this really relaxing weekend away. So it was Mike and I's first time. Sorry. I'm just going to re readjust my little shawl here. It was our very first time to both be away from the baby. Um, we have both separately left her for a weekend, you know, in each other's care. Uh, so this was our first time to like get away together since she came home. So that's a long time. It's 15, almost, you know, I guess it's like almost 14 months since we brought her home. So, um, yeah, it was time for us to go. Uh, my mom watched her. Obviously she lives here. She takes care of her during the day. We were not very concerned about leaving her. We just haven't done it because, you know, it's hard to get away when you're a parent. And, um, you know, when she's itty bitty, we, we weren't ready. And now she's like in such good routines and she's like pretty easy to navigate throughout the day, um, that they had a great weekend together. Um, and we had a great weekend away. So, uh, um, the company I was at before we got purchased early last year, um, we, I, I got invited to go to our president's club and our CEO at the time, even though we, none of us work for him anymore, um, still decided to honor that group of people and, uh, did a very nice weekend away in Washington. So, um, we went to a place called post hotel. I'll put a picture or two up here because this place is epically gorgeous. Um, it is in Leavenworth, which is sort of like the middle of the state and sort of the middle of nowhere. It's this very fun. If you guys are not from, from Washington or the Pacific Northwest, this is a very fun, um, town that was built sort of in the middle of nowhere over, uh, over the Cascade mountains. Um, but and like kind of close to a bigger town city, uh, but it's like just a little bit removed and on the way for like, it's like on a major, major highway. It's a two lane highway or whatever, but it is um, like a common destination for there. There's a lake there. That's a common destination for like summer things. And this place is close to sort of close to the ski hills. So it gets people to come all year round, but it is called Leavenworth and it is a um, little town that is totally um, decked out in Bavarian architecture. So the town itself is super cute. Like everything there is like very quaint looking. Um, and this hotel was built just like five years ago and it's gorgeous. So it is a spa. It's an adults only hotel. Um, there's only 55 rooms and every detail is so, so beautiful. And when you go, it's sort of like a semi all-inclusive experience. So you get like breakfast, you know, it's like all, all the things you want are included. Um, the staff is impeccable. Everything is gorgeous. Um, the rooms are beautiful. Um, and we had this like great Vista. Actually, I'll, I'll put up one picture that I took today at breakfast that just like from the dining table we were eating at the Cascade Mountains are just like right there and they're huge and snow snowy and it was very pretty um also we haven't gotten any snow here in Seattle this year so like which is fine this winter I'm totally fine with no snow here because we can just drive you know a couple hours away and get some snow <laughs> I didn't really venture out in the snow because that was not the point of this weekend so the point of this weekend is that this hotel is also a spa and so they have this like very fun um like I mean, it's really kind of epic. There are seven saunas slash steam rooms, two cold plunges, a warm salt, semi-salt pool, and there are two hot tubs, one inside, one outside. And the, the like semi-warm pool, you can like, I mean, by warm pool, I mean, it's like a little bit more than body temperature, but not as hot as a hot tub, but you can like swim out to outside. So you can just go from inside to outside. It is so pretty. Um, it is spendy. It is definitely like, it was a nice retreat that our, you know, was paid for 
us because we won this thing to go there. Um, and I was funny because I was like explaining to Mike, I had a couple of coworkers who have been before. And so they were like, oh yeah, this is what you could expect. Like bring your swimsuit. You're going to like stay at the spa all day. Well, you know, we had two beautiful dinners out, um, which is when I took my brownstone to work on, uh, which was, everybody thought was so funny because it was dark there. So like the, the dinners were very mood lit, but I'm like, I don't need to look to knit. So, and I was having conversations and they're like, are you knitting right now? And I was like, yeah, obviously. And don't say anything about it. <laughs> no, my coworkers are pretty cool. Um, but I, yeah, so they were telling me like, you know, you're just going to be at the spa all day and like, the, you know, just hang on the robes and they have these great lounger chairs. And my husband was like, I don't think I want to do that. And I was like, you know, just, just try it. Just try it. Okay. Once he saw this place, he was like, Oh, and they have these fun, like routines you can do. So it's like, you know, five minutes in the hot tub, two minutes in the cold plunge, then go to the steam room, then go to the, you know, so like telling you what to do if you want, there's like a detox one. And, you know, it was very fun. Our favorite room, I don't know, we liked all of the herbal rooms. So there was like a floral steam room, which was very hot and steamy, but smelled so nice. Um, there was like a cold room and it was basically like sitting in the refrigerator so we didn't do it for very long like five minutes but after the heat it was like super nice change for your body and that one smelled like mint um and then there was a another steam room that wasn't quite as hot but it was a eucalyptus steam room and it, they had these warm um like like a chaise lounge but there were like six of them so you just got your own chaise lounge to sit in this warm eucalyptus steam I'm not, this place was like so indulgent um we had a really really great time I thought I was gonna have tons of time to knit though I was like yeah we'll just like dunk in for a little and then we'll knit but like you end up kind of doing like but traveling between rooms like consistently for about an hour and then we relaxed a little we took a nap like we don't get to nap that was very fun <laughs> Um, you know, and then we just, and we went to dinner and like eating in between. I just like ended up only doing a few rows each day and that's not a bad thing. I got to like, we also got massages that was part of like the gift and it was a 90 minute massage and I told, um, it was a couple's massage. Um, and, and my husband, I was like, do you want to, we, ha we picked this, the slot that had a male and a female masseuse and, um, I asked him what he wanted and he said he was like I think a female and I was like okay great I want more pressure I want somebody to like kind of beat me up I was like I need all of the knots taken out so when I got in there he asked like if I have any concern areas and I was like no I like feel okay but I'm a knitter so I would really love a little extra like hand and a forearm time so he moved me through the routine a little bit faster and he was like gave me a lot of time on my forearms and my neck and shoulders. And he even said when we got out, he was like, man, you weren't kidding. Your forearms are really tight. And I was like, I just use them a lot and I do stretch. Um, but that brings me to a couple of more things to talk about this week. So number one, I got sent a really great video from one of our, you know, your fellow followers, someone who watches, um, and someone who I, I Instagram chat with, and I, uh, I'm gonna link it below. It is an Instagram video of somebody who has, like, a really nice stretch routine. It's a little bit different than some of the other ones I've seen, so I just thought I would link it so you guys could all see it. This is your friendly reminder to stretch before you knit. Stretch while you're knitting, stretch after you're knitting. I don't know that it matters a whole lot when you do it, I usually like to, like, I'll knit at my desk and not stretch, right? But if I'm going to sit down and knit at night, like, actually concentrate and knit for, like, you know, a couple of hours, I do like to open with a little stretching. <laughs> I do a lot of, you know, like, just muscle things. You know, I don't spend tons of time doing it, maybe two or three minutes. And then whenever I need a break in the middle of knitting, I like to, like, I just get up and make myself tea. That's usually my indicator to like stretch my body a little bit and also, you know, like rotate my wrists, stretch out my hands. Um, so I'm going to knit an, or link another video too that is to the Knitting PT. She's got a couple of like short routines for like mid knit stretches and also before you knit. Um, and some of that's also, I think she has a couple... I, I found one for wrists, but I think she might have a couple that are like posture based too. So I'll find a couple of them and I'll link them below. Um, it's just your friendly reminder that if you want to keep knitting, uh, take care of your body. Okay. 
So, uh, the last couple of things to talk about are two um, fun things you can join in some community with. Okay, so the first thing is actually um, not me. So I got linked, I think, to a, just a story or something the other day. Um, I'll put a link to her Instagram page, but um, um, but there's a gal. Her name is Anna, and her handle is Story and Stitches. She doesn't have a ton of followers, but I'm um, just a couple of people like I, I saw like maybe post stories about this. Um, she is doing a little yarny book club. So um, she like put a poll out, I think, to like look for book suggestions, and then did a little vote and picked a book called Unskein of Death. Um, it is a yarn related book. It's like a little mystery, murder mystery book, um, I think. And uh, they are going to, she's going to do like um, maybe Discord or a Google Hangout or something um, on February 17th. So if you want to read the book, you have a couple weeks. I got it from the library um, uh, and I will listen to that this week probably. And yeah, just a little fun thing. If you want to chat, if you love reading and you want to chat about books with some fellow knitters, um, I don't know that they'll always be yarn related, but I thought this one looked like a fun one to join in anyway. So I will probably be there um, as long as I don't have like baby dude or anything that day. Um, and it seems like a really fun thing to do. Uh, the other thing is actually me related. So I did announce last week um, that... I am doing a little make along for my first of my make 12 this year, which is the instant crash pullover. Um, this is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli, who is Hohi Locat on um, Instagram. And uh, if you have not seen her patterns, this is actually my first Hohi pattern. I have not cast one on before, but I think everyone else in the knitting group has done at least one of her patterns. They have a very high praise for her. So I have full confidence in this, um, in this pattern. And I, I've like really loved seeing the versions people have put together. So, um, I put the picture here. The instant crush is a four color, uh, I think she holds mohair double. DK weight sweater, color work sweater, um, intended to be knit with, with fluff held double. I am doing it with two skeins of, I'm doing with Surrey, two strands of Surrey, um, that are all colors I got from Backloop Yarn Co. I'm super excited about it and I'm really, I'm gonna, um, get all the things ready and, uh, the cast on is February 1st, February 1st, by the way, we're already at January 28th today, um, February 1st is on Thursday. So here's the deal, peeps. I've gotten like three or four people that have said that they would like to join the knit along, which is so exciting. Um, the reason I'm even doing this first one is because somebody asked me, like right after I t put up the Make 12, she asked if I would consider doing any make alongs. And I said, yeah, hey, let's do the first one. Uh, we can continue doing these throughout the year. Essentially, you guys can always knit along with me. I mean, I don't always tell you ahead of time that I'm going to make something, but sometimes I will be like, hey, this is going to be the next thing on the needles. And if you want to knit with me, let's knit together. Um, but for this one, I do want to extend. We'll try it. We'll try it out. Let's see. Um, I am going to make an Instagram chat. So if you would like to join the Instagram chat because you will be making this with us, um, please send me a message on Instagram and I will add you to the chat. I've see, I think I have like four people who said they were going to join. Um, I will go back to all those comments and just in case you guys are not watching this week yet, because <laughs> I'm not going to post this until Monday. Um, I am filming and it is already 9 p.m. or something like that. And so I'm going to let my videos render and I will um, edit this tomorrow. But uh, I will go back to those comments and just put a message. Hey, message me on Instagram if you want to be in a chat. So if you want to join, if you want to be in this chat and have a little extra community around the make, please, please message me on Instagram. Um, I am going to do this until March 31st. I will finish whenever I finish. I will try to finish by the deadline. Um, but even if I finish early, I'm going to like keep the chat open until the 31st. And so, um, 
if I mean if we get like more than 10 people then I'll do some sort of giveaway if it's less than that then maybe I still will but I'm not gonna make any promises right now um, I have yarn I can absolutely give some of you guys but uh yeah so that's what we're doing <laughs> just a little extra community because why not uh that's what we're all here for right to like talk about yarny things with other people I'm talking to a camera you guys are just listening <laughs> but we can chat live um yeah so I mean and maybe we'll do like a google hangout or something during one of that time we'll see kind of we'll kind of see like the temperature of the group and also like where people are located because if we're super far apart I don't want to like make it so other people can't join so anywho that is the intention for this we'll see how it goes um so if you want to join and even if you're not going to cast on on the first and you still just like plan to join at some point during it please let me know uh and you can still join the chat early I think that's all for right now. So we're still talking about this. Like I'm trying to keep five things on the needles. I'm still trying to like, you, I will say the goal that I'm, I'm nailing the most so far is test knitting. Cause I have not signed up for a test knit yet. I haven't even put an application in for any test knit yet this year, like not since November, which I've not had a break this long. And so in, since I started testing, um, so it's been really nice to just work on my own project. So my plans include to keep the five, um, finishing up this cardigan this week so I can cast the instant crush on, um, and then doing some major work on the stick season and the ballerina wrap top because I have a couple of other t-shirts I'm really, really wanting to cast on and that is going to be the replacement there. Um... I think that's all I have to share with you guys. I think this was a kind of a short episode, which is not a bad thing. Um, I had a really busy week and it was not all knitting. So uh, next week, I think we will have more knitting things completed. Um, I did film on Friday and then I didn't end up bringing my computer with me because I really just didn't want the hassle. I could have done it, but... Um, I did film a little 20 minute video on my spreadsheets and I will get that up probably also tomorrow. Um, I don't have to do much editing on it. So I just have to intro, outro, kind of that's it. Um, but look out for that. And I hope that that answers people's questions. People, just some people wanted to know more about like the, all the things I was tracking. Um, and yeah. I am super behind on doing some of my stats more like the yarn in is all good. Um, the thing that I'm behind on is my yarn out. Like I still have not weighed my leaf. <laughs> and now I have to take this into account too. Um, I don't have very much yarn left over from this. I have just a little bit of the dyed in the wool and I have a third maybe a little bit more of the good wool which is like enough to do a headband maybe I could do a matching brioche headband um but yeah I don't know what I'll do with it but it is still really pretty and I could totally do a little bit of an accompanying thing so we'll see um I'm not like in the need I don't need to use it right this moment but yeah I need to get those stats done because I kind of want to do a monthly it just for myself update on like what's out. So I know, <laughs> cause if I wait till the end of like a quarter, I'm going to very much have overestimated how much yarn I used. Um, and I will keep buying things. I did buy some yarn during the monochrome collection. I got on there super early. I knew this one was going to be super popular. I don't, I don't know guys. I, I didn't want like, look, I was having dinner at the like I purchased it right before we started eating dinner and then I wasn't really watching stories but I did see that she closed it really fast so like I don't know if it was 30 minutes but like it was very short um I got only two colors you'll see them when they get here and I will talk about plans then um but I really kept it very small and those two things have very specific plans and I'm very excited to make the, the projects but um We'll worry about that when they get here in 12 weeks, 12 to 16 weeks. Um, 
So that's all for today. I had fun hanging out with you this very late Sunday. Um, I'll post this on Monday. Please, please, please let me know if you want to join the Instagram chat. I think it'll be really fun. I am not a huge, I will tell you this off the bat, I'm not really great at group chats. It's like not in my personality to join in in that manner. <laughs> But if I'm hosting it, I think I'll do a better job answering questions and chatting with people. Not that it's necessarily like I'm going to answer your questions on the pattern. I'm here for that. That's absolutely part of it. If you want that security blanket of people making the same thing, that's why I love test knits. Um, but uh, like if you want help picking colors, if you want to just chat about where you are in the pattern or like show some pictures to keep yourself motivated to work on it, that's what we're going to be there for. So I hope to see some of you there on Instagram and um, for everyone else, I will talk to you next week. Have a good one. Bye.